Recent studies have shown that Portugal has the largest lithium reserves in Europe and one of the biggest in the world, and companies are already trying to put their hands on its precious mineral. The Swedish startup Northvolt, created by a former Tesla executive, has now teamed up with the Portuguese energy giant Galp to invest 700 million euros in a lithium conversion factory, and there are already plans for a battery manufacturing. The location will be announced in the following weeks, but the mine regions have already been identified. Most of them are located around the Garda district in the northeast of Portugal, but one of them is within the Porto and Braga district, two of the most populated areas in the country. At first sight, this last region could easily be dismissed, because the population density in this area is far greater than the ones in the countryside, but on a second thought, this zone could be the perfect location, due to the relative proximity with city centers, ports, universities, good public infrastructures and manufacturing hubs, this region could easily develop to be the R&D and manufacturing of the biggest and most promising gigafactories in Europe. If we look at the statistics for lithium reserves worldwide, some people might argue that if Chile alone has most of the lithium reserves in the entire world, why is Portuguese lithium such a big deal? Well, the answer is in the graph. You see, all of these countries are either too far away from Europe to ever have a sustainable business or their internal demand is also extremely high. And with EV car sales soaring in the recent years, the demand for this mineral is extremely high and only expected to grow. If we compare this graph with the Supply Chain Vulnerability Index for 2022, one thing doesn't seem to add up. It's easy to see how Europe and especially Germany are suffering for this lack of offer and soaring demand, but the US are also very vulnerable. But why, you might ask? Don't they have one of the largest reserves of lithium in the world? Yes, that is correct, but there's a catch. Lithium is not even a rare earth mineral, in fact, it is very abundant and present in almost all of the earth's crust, but it is rare to find in densely condensed rocks, and most of it is too spread to even consider mining. This drawback leads the US to be heavily reliant on foreign resources, and that is exactly what Europe is trying to avoid. With recent events involving the pandemic, Europe saw the limitations in the manufacturing, raw material and supply crisis make them feel powerless. They saw themselves too reliant on China and foreign powers for their business stability and took this event as a wake-up call. The recent efforts involving the investment in these three sectors have made a massive boost for the creation of battery factories in the old continent, and Portugal seems like the perfect bet. The EU is simply too reliant on Chile at the moment, with 79% of its lithium coming all the way from South America by dirty diesel cargo ships, which kind of defeats the whole purpose. Portugal possesses all the key ingredients for the manufacturing of a modern-day lithium-ion battery. It has lithium, cobalt, nickel, graphite and manganese. The International Energy Agency predicts the demand for these minerals to grow 30 times by 2050, with lithium expected to see the biggest growth, followed by nickel and graphite, so the potential for Portugal is humongous. It could become one of the major mining players in the world due to the large reserves of cobalt and nickel found on the ocean floors. And with a new plan to extend the continental shelf, we could see Portugal become the 16th largest country in the whole world. This could be revolutionary for the Portuguese economy, but more on that on a later video. And speaking of a later video, these cobalt and nickel reserves were found all over the seabed, but especially near the Ilhas Selvagens. That, accompanied by the fact that there is also the probability of hydrocarbon resources, often known as fossil fuels, natural gas, oil and coal, explains why the Spanish government also claims these waters, so expect this region of the Atlantic and the two Iberian brothers to be very active in the coming decades. But I digress. A country that is inside the EU like Portugal could offer stability, proximity and reliability like no other. By being in the European Union, this could mean greater flexibility when it comes to border issues, import tariffs and political disagreements. Plus, this could also signify a greater control in the sustainability of the project, human rights concerns and a fair wage problems. And lithium, along with these minerals, are not only used in cars, they are vital for aerospace, electronics and literally all the digital uses. These type of batteries are by far the most common and are present in every single device, from smartphones to watches and even toothbrushes. It is expected that Europe alone will need 904,000 tons of lithium by 2050, and these lands, having potentially hundreds of thousands of tons, can become the main supplier. The German multinational Bosch was another company quick to notice and capitalize on this so-called new white gold rush. But it wasn't the only one. As you can see from this picture, 
Portugal has already created a battery manufacturing conglomerate in 2021 to plan and prepare for the creation of an entire new sector on the nation's economy. Some of these logos you might already recognize, but one interesting case is the one of Savannah Resources, that before this was even new to the general public, is settled its business in the Serra do Barão, one of the richest lithium mines of the whole reserve, owning the rights to explore and extract. Then they made a partnership with once more Galp, the seventh biggest company in Portugal and one of the biggest oil and energy production companies in the world. This creation of the Pat Power conglomerate, which is seeing a lot of major companies being added every month, has the objective not only to create and develop the industry and qualify job generation, but also intends to make Portugal not dependent on foreign companies for the manufacturing of the batteries, and that way being able to compete in its ruthless market. This group of enterprises is made of companies that could help, benefit and accelerate this initiative of making Portugal Europe's battery. This initiative is partially funded by the European Union and has its main headquarters in the International Institute of Nanotechnology in Braga, in the north of Portugal. The group intends to be exploring most of the land by 2030 and have manufacturing, supply and R&D facilities up and running and major partnerships with the big shops like the VW Group, BMW Group, Daimler and the PSA. Not only that, but one of the founding companies, Seia, even have plans to build the first Portuguese electric car and Famel, the first Portuguese electric motorcycle. Speaking of VW, they are one of the three automotive groups that already have manufacturing facilities in the country, the other ones being Toyota and the PSA. So the recent announcement of the creation of six new gigafactories in Europe has seen the possibility of Portugal increase even further. Before Tesla decided to go for Berlin for their gigafactory, there were serious talks about bringing the facility to southern Europe and Portugal was a serious contender. Seeing that it is one of the greener countries in Europe, has plenty of sun available to supply sunlight to the roof of the gigafactory and was offering the land and some tax benefits to the American company. In the end, these factors weren't enough, but with now Musk claiming that a second European gigafactory will be built, the probability of Portugal being picked by Elon due to the mineral reserves just increased significantly. Despite some ethical and environmental concerns being raised by the surrounding populations in regard to public health and water contamination problems, the project is to go ahead and sacrifice the few to benefit the many. Some people are expected to move out of high-risk areas, but everything will stay under EU regulations and procedures, and definitely follow the Human Rights Act, so the protests are not being considered as a major threat for this vision. This investment in the countryside will help to decelerate the mass migration of people to the seaside and bring back qualified jobs to a region that has been relying on agriculture and apiculture more and more over the years. Local people will protest, I don't blame them, but the plan is going to happen. Portugal has white gold and Europe wants it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you want to see more of this or simply leave a thumbs up if you liked it, as it really helps me a lot. I will see you in the next one. Obrigado.